So when we're talking about velocity, velocity is actually de derived as a, or defined as the rate that the position is changing. So we talked about displacement, now we're talking about average velocity. So average velocity is simply defined by how quickly we are traversing the distance, right? So if I go, we're going 60 miles per hour, that means we're traversing 60 miles every hour. Now, mathematically, we still define it like a vector because it's based on the displacement. Okay, that's the key thing about velocity. We're gonna talk about speed later on. Speed's a little bit different. So speed and velocity are not the same thing. Velocity is a vector. It means it has a direction and it has a magnitude associated with it, okay? And it is defined as the displacement divided by the time. Standard units of velocity are meters per second because it's meters is our standard SI unit for displacement divided by time, which our standard SI unit is seconds for that. Now, a couple of things about the vector. It points in the same direction as the displacement vector. That's one of the things about why I show you this formula. It's a very simple formula, but it's telling you something about the vector. It's because time is not a vector. Time is a scalar. So when you just divide a vector by a scalar, it's still a vector. And it points in the same direction that the displacement. So if the displacement is to the right, then the velocity is pointing to the right, which I think should make sense to you. If I have an object, it's traveling to the right then it's not only is it, its displacement is to the right, but we say is velocity also pointing to the right. And then just like displacement, the sign of the velocity is gonna tell you the direction, okay? Uh, one other note is objects at rest have a velocity of zero. So whenever you see or read a scenario where you said something at rest, that really means its displacement is zero. And if its displacement is zero, its velocity is zero. Now, this is unlike speed. Speed is actually, in when you're using you know, normal English and you're talking with people, you might think speed and velocity mean the same thing, but technically speed is the rate at which the distance is changing. So speed is the distance we travel divided by the time. And like we talked about last time or in the last lesson on the displacement is that distance and displacement may be the same value, but often are different. Okay, speed is a scalar just like distance. So if you think about like your car and it's telling you how fast it's going, 60 miles per hour, for example, that is a speed, not a scalar. Oh, sorry, it's a scalar, it's a speed, not the vector, because a vector would require, the velocity would imply that there's a direction associated with it, okay? So um, that's one thing to note. There's a couple of things. This will come up a lot more later on as we're doing some more advanced kinematic scenarios, but there is a difference, and I like to bring this up early for you guys, is the difference between average velocity and speed versus instantaneous velocity and speed, okay? And so some, oftentimes, we're not gonna talk about in this lesson, in the next lesson, in the future lessons, but when the velocity is changing, there's a distinction between the average speed ver slash velocity versus the instantaneous speed and velocity. So the really key difference between the word instantaneous and average is instantaneous is at a particular moment in time. So for example, you're the odometer or speedometer in a car when it says it's going 60 miles per hour, that's at that exact moment in time you are going 60 miles per hour. The average speed might be over the entire duration. So let's say you're driving down the highway or you're driving down any road, and, but we'll say a highway. On average, you might be going 60 miles an hour, but there may be moments where you're going faster and moments in which you are going slower than that because maybe there's a car in front of you, maybe there's traffic, maybe you're passing another car, whatever. There, the average speed may be about 60 miles an hour, but the instantaneous is gonna vary. So really what you're looking for is the distinction is whether it's at one point in time or over an interval of time. And the, in, the ones for instantaneous, we will cover this more in future lessons. When we do kinematic equations and when we do graphs of motion, that will be important distinction for you and we'll revisit that some more. So um, the next part is we're gonna go through some examples. So here's an example of a motion, and let's go through the problem solving steps like we did with the displacement. Is we have an object that moves upwards 10 meters in the first two seconds, then moves down four meters in another two seconds. Assume upwards is the positive direction. And they're asking, what is the displacement of the motion for the entire four seconds, okay? So again, first step, always draw the motion. So we're gonna go up 10 meters, right? And I, I usually put the seconds there, like seconds. And then it's gonna go down four meters, so we're gonna go down, not all the way to the beginning, down four meters, also takes two seconds, and we're gonna end right here. 
Okay, not to scale or anything like that, but that's that's a diagram of the motion. And, and we're gonna say upward is the positive direction. Now, we wanna draw the displacement vector. For the entire four seconds, the displacement vector is from where you started to where you ended. That is the displacement vector. And the length of that displacement vector, because it's pointing upwards, we said uh, the displacement vector is pointing upwards. That distance is six meters because the from here to here is 10 meters. From here to here is four meters. This is six meters pointing upwards. So the displacement is positive six meters because the arrow is pointing upwards. And we said up was the positive direction. What is the average velocity for the fourth four seconds? So the average velocity is going to be that displacement over that time interval. Right, so it goes six meters over that entire four seconds. That's going to be 1.5 meters per second. Okay, how about the first two seconds? What was the average velocity? Well, now we got to draw the new displacement vector because now we're talking about the two first two seconds. The displacement vector is actually from there to there. Now it's not saying we ended there, but over the first two seconds, that is the ending part of the motion, and it went upwards 10 meters. Right, and so here the average velocity is going to be the displacement over the time, and the displacement is 10 meters, and that takes two seconds, so that is five meters per second. Okay, what is the average velocity for the final two seconds? Okay, so the final two seconds we went from here to here, so that went down four meters. Now, that is again, when you do average velocity, we're going to do the displacement over the time. That displacement is negative four meters because it's pointing down and up is the positive direction. Over two seconds, that's gonna be negative two meters per second. Now, one thing I want you to observe is that the average velocity in the first two seconds, the average velocity in the second two seconds doesn't really connect to the average velocity here. It's not like you average, well, okay, in this one you can average it because the same amount of time, but they are different things. You don't necessarily just want to average these two or at least, you can average it because it's the same amount of time. That's just a poor example. But you always want to look, when you're doing average velocity, looking at the displacement, the arrow direction, drawing that vector, that displacement divided by time, okay? And not necessarily averaging these things. You can kind of do that averaging if you've done calculus before, but uh, for the most part, we don't want to average it like that. We literally always want to look at what is the displacement and what is the time when we're doing average velocity. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you'd like more support, maybe you need more multiple choice practice, maybe you just need more guidance and things like that, I have plenty of information on my website. If you look in the description below and go to www.bothellstemcoach.com, uh, I will explain all the ways I help students be successful in their AP classes.